I've been um, posting these on my YouTube, you guys. <laughs> Usually I try to get it done right after I do it, but this morning I just did the one that I did yesterday. So I've been posting them on my YouTube. If you have anybody who wants to watch them or if you don't catch them or whatever. Um, good morning. Happy Friday. I'm so excited to meet with you guys this morning. Yesterday was like the best day ever. I'm going to tell you about it. Hold on. And there was nothing that like happened truly other than I, um, I drove down to Eugene, which is about a two hour drive. And I finished a book, which was so good. And then I listened to worship music literally the rest of the time. And I got to meet with um, one of the girls on our team. She's, I would say, newer. I've probably been in the business about four or five months now. Um, but I'd never met her before. And you guys, that never gets old when you meet people on social media. And then you get to go meet them in person. Like that never gets old. It's so much fun. I love it. And so um, I drove all the way to her. And you might be thinking like, holy cow, that is such a long drive. Like Brian said the same thing. But driving without Huntley for some reason gives me so much joy. Like I love my daughter. Do not get me wrong, but I am not even kidding you. Like my, you guys are going to laugh at me, but my suburban has like the biggest sub in it. It's not even funny. Like that thing bumps. Okay. So I was bumping worship music straight up all the way down to Eugene singing my heart out. Like I can't even tell you, I felt like Jesus was just sitting in the passenger seat with me, just talking with me. I like, it was, everything that I needed and more. Um, and Bree said, I love taking a drive without my kid too. That's okay. Good. I'm not alone. <laughs> you guys, when you travel full-time for a living with a, what, what she was one, one years old to 18 month old. And then now when we go back on Tuesday, we're still gonna, you know, we're still traveling, but, um, it is, yeah, she just, she doesn't like, she doesn't like driving. So when I get to do it by myself, especially for long hauls, I absolutely love it. So I got to just have an amazing time. My cup is so full. My cup is so full. And then on the way home, um, about an hour in between where Brian's parents live and where I was to meet that girl, um, my dad lives. And so I called him and I was like, Hey, I'm taking you and my stepmom out to dinner. Let's go. So we went, we went to Olive Garden and I got to spend some time with them. And that was awesome. It was exactly what I needed to. So I had a full day of driving and meetings and it was, it was just so awesome. So my cup is more than full this morning to pour into you guys. I'm going to start with the, all my stuff got moved over here. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to start with the self-reliant entrepreneur. It's the 10th. Can you guys believe it? Oh, and while I was driving, I signed a distributor and a loyal customer yesterday. So, I mean, like, <laughs> not while I was driving. Like, I mean, yeah, I was driving and they signed up, but I wasn't like, you know, trying to kill myself and texting and driving or anything. But how exciting. Like, here's the thing. This is what I firmly believe. And you guys, again, may think that I'm great, but sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. Um, I truly feel that you are in the right, when you are in the right mindset, wow, I can't even talk. When you are in the right mindset, when your cup is full, people just come to you. And I, I like, I can't, I can't explain it other than telling you that like, you can go a full day without messaging or working because that was me yesterday, other than meeting with my, meeting with my teammate. But, um, and, and, you know, I made a post or whatever, but I didn't get a chance to message yesterday. And but here's the thing. I had so much follow-ups to do once I got home because of, because of, I don't know, my, my, my mindset, it's the silliest thing. So I had a girl, a random girl reach out that I've never talked to and was like, I'm interested in your keto coffee. Funny thing is she had gotten three messages from me. One being like, Hey girl, I've got a quick question for you. She never answered it. The next one was like, Hey, I'm looking for people in your area. She never answered it. And then, um, I don't remember what other, oh, she wanted a giveaway. She like commented on a giveaway once. And so I messaged her about that and she never responded to me. And then today or yesterday, she was like, Hey, I'm interested in this coffee. Can you tell me more about it? Like I'm ready to buy it. And so I voice messaged her since I was driving. And I don't know if maybe it was a combination of voice messaging and not because sometimes 
after the first initial message, a lot of the times I don't voice message. I'll just give them all the facts. Excuse me. I'll just give them all the facts first. And then, um, you know, when I'm like following up all voice message, but I don't know, it like worked so well. She started voice messaging me back. She was so excited and she signed up right away for the premium pack. So, um, it was just so exciting because I think that's exactly what I needed. I think a lot of us get in our heads so much of like, you know, we're going through the motions. We're going through the motions of things. Maybe we're even going through the motions of life. And a lot of the times things aren't happening the way that maybe we want them to, or we think maybe we're, we're missing something or we're not doing the things, we're not doing everything that we're supposed to be doing, but it's because going through the motions is not going through the motions inspired. Okay, going through the motions isn't us being motivated. We asked our team yesterday, Brian, Brian's posting a lot on our team page now, and he asked the team, what motivates you? Um, and like, get nitty gritty. Like, what motivates you? I want to know exactly what motivates you. And you guys, some of the things that I was seeing was so inspiring and motivating to me to see your guys' inspiration, to see your guys' motivation gives me motivation to help you guys with your goals. And that was so, that, that got me back to why, I, I wouldn't say why I started. I can't say why I started because I started for selfish reasons, right? I didn't start for a team. I didn't start for these people that are already on my team. I started to pay off my debt, right? But I promoted to triple and presidential because of my team. I wanted to help them promote and in return, we promoted, right? And so it made me feel again, like when we were pushing so hard for triple and prez, I, I got re-inspired. I got re-inspired to see what they, what they had, what they have for motivation and what keeps them going. And I think that it's important to remember that. Um, and it's even better as a leader to be able to tell them when they feel down, do you remember when you wrote this? This is your motivation. This is what you, um, you know, this is what you wrote that day because this is what you truly felt really motivates you. So let's get back to that. Let's have this drive you, you know? So I, I don't know. I just like yesterday was just awesome. Okay. January 10th, cast your bread. Okay. Mother's motto was hope and keep busy. And in one of her sayings, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days, it will come back buttered. Um, this Louisa May, her life letters and journals, 1914. The message, the message contained in today's reading is a playful version of a notion as old as all of civilization. Civilization. It appears in the book of, um, you guys, I can't read that. Cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days. Ecclesiastes, did I say that right? I know, I know it's a book in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 11, one through six. I'm pretty sure. I'm probably butchering it. It's fine. And could be seen as a literal, character, literal, literal characterization of the practice of the ancient Egyptian farmers who would cast seeds on top of the spring floodwaters of the Nile so that when the water receded the now germinated seeds, would settle into the rich soil and produce a fruitful harvest. In her life letters and journals, Alcott recounts a winter, a winter when a neighbor lacked firewood. So her parents gave half of their dwindling pile to the neighbor in need without any real idea of how they would provide enough heat for their own home. Shortly after a woodcutter passing by feared the drifting snow and asked if he could drop off his load there, he told them that because they were doing him a favor, they needn't hurry about paying for it. The universe has an amazing scorekeeping system and those who trust that they will need, or excuse me, those who trust that what they need will show up at the appropriate moment can stay focused on acting in a mindset of prosperity. An essential element of self-reliance in the belief that all things are connected and that what is good for others is good for you and it's good for all. Keeping the continuous cycle of giving and receiving flowing and flowing through investing and reaping is how abundance appears at precisely the moment nature intended. The challenge question is when was the last time you shared something unconditionally? Um, 
Okay, so to me, I hear stories like this all of the time, like where people just give. I, I hear it with I hear it with money. I hear it with giving things, and they get things in return. And what it all boils down to is that they. And I don't know if you heard that in here. And this is this is not a Christian. This is not like a Christian. This is just about self-reliant entrepreneurs, you guys. This is not a Christian book by any means. And I'm, I, I loved that that passage and and that they stated something in the Bible, because what it shows us is that when we live our life not thinking about like how we're gonna get other things, but just knowing that God will provide for us, then things just happen. So I think a lot of us will. Um, I know for me, I will, I told you guys this yesterday, I will think of money. Like I will think of, well, wouldn't you think, what is the name of that book? Um, it's called the self-reliant entrepreneur. It's like, I'm going to write it in the chats. Um, it's like 366 daily meditations to feed your soul and grow your business. That's what it looks like. I got it at the airport. Um, when we're coming back from Costa Rica, I'm pretty sure. Um, so anyways, I love it. That's why I read from every day. And then I read from a devotional every day too. But what I love about it is a lot of us will think of money, right? We'll think of like, if we give money, then we'll get money back. But what you don't understand is that we should just be living our lives, giving to others and not worrying about how we're going to pay our bills, not worrying about how we're going to um, keep warm in the winter, like it said, right? Uh, Brian and I were talking about this the other night because when I was taking those tests that I was telling you guys about yesterday, like the personality tests, I can't tell you how many questions asked me, um, like, are you a preparer? Or like, do you like, do you prepare for things? Do you, um, do you feel safe at night? Like there was questions that were like, do you um, like, oh, like go around and like double check all of your doors and like, do you do all of these things? And what's crazy is I don't know if it's because I was when I like my dad's a Marine. Okay. So like we all, we always felt safe, but not only that, literally we lived in a neighborhood and our doors were never locked like straight up as a kid, we lived in Kaiser. So it's not like it was the, it's not like it was a, a bad area by any means, but like he never locked our doors. And if those doors were locked, he was like I'm like I'm not even kidding like if he came home at like 6 p.m from working all day and I'm inside with my brother and I had the door locked he would like he'd be like why is this door locked like this house is safe like why is this door locked and for the longest time you guys seriously you might I know I'm crazy my family's crazy it's fine but what's crazy is that what that taught me and and again you might be thinking that's nuts like why would you leave your door unlocked but what that taught me was that we were safe we were safe. We were safe inside the home. We were safe. Um, and of course now like our world is a little bit different than it used to be. And that was only like, I don't even know, 20 years ago, but still like our world is different now, but, um, I don't worry about those things. And I, and I don't know if it's because of my childhood or I don't know if it's just because I truly believe that God will keep us safe. I don't stay up at night wondering if somebody's going to break in. I don't, I don't even, think about, I literally don't think about those things. And I was, and I was talking to Brian about it and he was like, I do. He's like, I definitely think about them because I want to make sure that I'm keeping you girls safe, but I don't, I don't sit here and like dwell on it or like plead with God and pray that nobody breaks in tonight. Like he doesn't, he doesn't worry about it. Right. He just kind of, um, he just kind of, you know, is aware of it or whatever. And I'm like, the, he's like, you're, he actually said this. He's like, yeah, you're just kind of oblivious to it. And I'm like, it's not that I'm oblivious. It's really not that it's that I truly trust that we're going to be safe. Like I do, I just trust that we're going to be safe. And so, um, and even if anything happened, here's another thing. And I don't know if this, like, I don't even know if this resonates with anybody, but even if something were to happen, I truly in the bottom of my heart, in my gut, everything still know that we would be safe. I, I don't know why. I just, tr I just believe that. And so, um, you know, even with traveling the country, I remember asking, answering some questions of other travelers of like, aren't you kind of like, aren't you kind of like nerved out right now? Like, <laughs> like you're, you have a daughter and you're traveling the country and you don't know where you are a lot of the times. And you're just like, you're just like living your life. And I'm like, no, not one bit. It never crossed my mind. It doesn't, I truly trust 
that God will always provide and he will always take care of us. Now, um, when we talk about money, that's a whole nother story, right? I told you guys yesterday that like I'm, my, my goal for this year is to tithe every month. And that is truly because I know that I have a problem with worrying about money. And again, that stems, that stems back um, to my childhood. Of course, you know, my, I don't like it. <laughs> okay. I won't say who said that. Um, no, but that's the, that's the funny part is like, now, of course we lock, we lock our like trailer door because we're like <laughs> in different cities and states all the time. You know, we're not, I, I just, I shared that with you guys just to know that, um, so that you know that like that's where I came from and, and we always felt safe and it, it just wasn't a thing that we did. Um, but what was I saying? Something about the trailer. Um, shoot, I don't remember what I was saying, guys. Can you guys help me out a minute? You remember what I was saying? Oh, money, 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 money. Okay, so for me, I worry about money and that, that probably comes from my childhood as well. Uh, my dad had to put literally everything on credit cards. And, and what's crazy is he was a, he is a, um, electrician. Okay. That man probably makes close to 70, $80,000 a year. No joke. Like very, very, very successful in his career. Okay. He's been doing it since I think I was born. So almost 30 years. And, um, but things kept happening. Things kept happening. My mom had a spending problem. She also had an alcohol and drug problem. Um, and when he finally divorced her, he had to give her spousal support. And that was a very, very huge chunk of his monthly income. And then they originally placed us with my mother. And when they originally did that, my dad drained his retirement fund, literally drained it. Like, took all of it out, paid the fees, everything to get us back. Okay. Because like you heard me say, my mom was a drug addict and an alcoholic. She was not fit to be a mother. However, the judge saw it differently because in that time, um, all kids went with their mother. It just was what it was. And she was very good at faking that she was, that she had her crap together. Um, and so she actually convinced the judge that my dad was not a fit father. So it was insane. It was so crazy. And I think I was 10. My brother was six. So you can kind of imagine I'm 10. I kind of see what's going on, right? I can kind of understand what's going on. My little brother just ultimately, you know, does not get the whole divorce. He doesn't understand what's going on. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, this is where everything began for me to mold of my adulthood and my spending habits and all of the things that um, I watched my dad go through. So he got us back um, completely. He had full custody of us. And then he had to still play spousal support, support and then still you know, take care of two kids while going to work full time. He had to pay a nanny to come, um, to come kind of help with us. And then, um, and then he got really, really huge into the Dave Ramsey plan. So my dad from when I was, I don't even know, 11 or 12 at this point, excuse me, was really into the Dave Ramsey plan and started paying off all the debt that my mother had racked up because that was now his debt as well. Um, and so once he got that all done, you guys, I'm not kidding you. It took him, let's see, when did my brother go to prison? Uh, it took him until Justin was 21. So I would have been 25 to pay off all of his debt. He went debt free when I was 25. Okay. So over 10 years that he was paying and, and like really living the life of like paying off everything and not going out to eat and not like living a life of very frugalness. Okay. If that's even a word, I just made that up. And, um, then, <laughs> then my brother got in that accident. And we needed all the money in the world to fight it with lawyers, right? And so immediately my dad got himself back into debt, um, trying to help my brother. And then um, as soon as it all was done and Justin went into prison, it's, it's actually really crazy. This is going to sound like a lot of, like, it is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but for what it was, I think, I think it was like $50,000 um, all said and done. And my dad has already paid that off. So that's incredible and amazing. Uh, but my point of this all was that this is where I learned 
about money. And so even though I have money to pay my bills, even though I have absolutely no credit cards, even though we can make our bills like no problem whatsoever every single month, I still worry about money. I don't know why. I do not know. It is ingrained in me. It is ingrained in me. And all I worry about is how much I've made before and how I want to surpass that. And of course, you know, what, what needs to come of me to be there. And I've always said, and I'm, I'm not just saying this, I have always said that I would be a millionaire by the time I was 30. And I don't know if y'all know, but I'm going to be 28 this year. And I'm like, <laughs> um, a time is a ticket, Rochelle. I have always said that I'm going to be a millionaire by 30. I don't know why. And Brian has always said that he's going to be a millionaire and not by 30 because he's 35, but he's always said that he's going to be a millionaire someday. Like that was always his thing. And we always joke around. He's like, yeah, so I'm going to marry you and you're going to be a millionaire. And then I'll be, a <laughs> and then I'll be a millionaire. That's his, that's his joke, I guess. I don't know. But something that I'm working on, that was a very long story. Something that I'm working on is trust. If I trust God with my safety, if I trust God with my, my daughter's safety every night, if I trust God to keep us safe all the way from Oregon to, to Florida, y'all, do you guys know something? We went, I'm knocking on wood because why not? Um, we went from Oregon to Florida, okay, to North Carolina, back to Florida, no issues with our, with our, I can't say no issues with our trailer. Um, no issue. We never had a flat tire. Okay. We never had a blowout. That's unheard of, literally unheard of. Uh, we never had problems with our truck. We had, we had something happen once we were coming in Utah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, was it Utah? Yeah. There's a lot of Hills and we were pulling our other trailer at the time. So it wasn't even that heavy. And Brian's truck was having like trouble getting up the hill. For some reason it was having trouble. We had to pull over and this guy had to pull over and I, like, I got hurt on my hip and we're like out there, like Brian's trying to figure out what's happening, something with the coolant. I don't even know. And this random guy like stops and pulls over. And Brian tells me later that he had like knots in his stomach the whole time that he was like on guard, that he had us in his view, that he just didn't trust. That he just didn't trust this guy. And what's crazy is I didn't even think about it. Like <laughs> I literally was like, Oh my gosh, what a nice guy. Like he's, and you guys, I don't mean, I don't mean that I am naive. Trust me when I say I have gut feelings all the time of like, you know, like I'm real, I'm a really good judge of character. I always have been. Um, so don't, <laughs> please don't think that I'm like, Oh, some random guy on the side of the road. Like he must be nice. Like I'm not naive like that. I just genuinely thought like, wow, what a cool dude to stop and help somebody on the side of the road when he saw that like we needed some help, right? He was super nice. He knew exactly what to do. He knew where to go. He got in his car and, and um, guided us where to go to pull off to a, a better, better area and like gas station. And like, you know, we would have service because we didn't have service. We didn't have any service there. So it was actually like awesome that he came and pulled off because we wouldn't have known that two miles down the road was a gas station because there was nothing in between and we hadn't seen anything. So like, again, I truly just felt like God will provide, like it'll be fine. And Brian was getting uh, on the phone once we got to this place and he's calling everybody. And um, Annie, actually, I think Chris was one of the people that he called and I don't remember who it was, Don or Chris, somebody told him that if it was what Brian thought it was, it was gonna be a $10,000 fix, okay? Like straight up, we had just hit Utah. Okay. We've been on the road for maybe a month and sorry, hold on. Um, we had just hit Utah and we're like $10,000. Like, is this a joke? Like we are not supposed to be on the road. Is God trying to tell us something like, you know, just both just started panicking, freaking out and Brian's losing it. Like if you guys don't know, Brian, Brian, when Brian hears something from somebody he trusts, he's very, I'm more like, well, let's like call around. Like, let's see. And he is very just like, no, this is not good. Like he was just losing his mind about it. And so I just started to pray. I just started to pray like, Lord, if we are supposed to be on this trip, if we are supposed to get a new truck, if we're like, what, whatever we are supposed to be doing, please just keep us safe and help us to, to, um, be grateful that at the time, and we still do thank God we have a, um, one of our goals last year was to have a, a six figure savings. Okay. So we had a six figure savings. We still do. And, um, $10,000 out of that is still a lot of money. Okay. That's a lot of money, but 
I was praying and thankful that we had it if we had to. Okay. We had it if we had to, and we didn't have to, and literally nothing is wrong with the truck. The next, like when we got back in the truck, it never did it again. It never did it again. No issues, no nothing. Okay. We made it all the way to Florida. Like I said, the only things that we have done to that truck is oil changes all the way there. And we got a new trailer and that's like nothing ever happened. And I'm telling you guys this because I, it's so crazy to me that looking back, Brian and I have talked about this all the time. You look at other travelers, you hear there, there's people that are on YouTube. Um, you meet other travelers, everything. We've heard stories that are insane that we're like, no, we've never had anything bad happen. Like we, like we've just been protected. Thank God. Okay. And we just know that we are protected and, and it is what it is. So now, um, I'm truly challenging myself that as much as I feel protected and as much as I feel like we will always be safe. I also need to know that we will always be taken care of with money. And that is also a mindset. That is also a 100% mindset. You guys, money is, is energy. And if you haven't watched a Pam, Pam Souter has a podcast. Um, Pam Souter has a podcast that I don't remember exactly which one it is, but you guys can search for it on hers. And it's, it's like, if anybody knows, please put it in the chat. But it's basically where she's talking about money. She's talking about money being a mindset, money being energy. Okay. And it is insane. One of um, Ashley, I don't think Ashley's on here right now, but I'm going to tell her story real quick because I'm obsessed with it. And then I'll read the devotional because I know I've kept you guys for a while. But Ashley um, has been doing this every single day where she literally will like put her hands up and she will say, like, I am, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember what she says now money flows to me. Money flows to me. Money is energy. Money just flocks to me, right? She just puts her hands out and she just says money flows to me. And what's crazy is you think like you would think that that's going to be with it works, right? Well, here's what's crazy. Um, she's gotten like certain things in the mail. Like they just got like a huge, a huge, um, check back from, um, they like paid too much last year on their house taxes or something. And they just got like this huge check back. And then, uh, Pam Souter, I'll write it in the chat. That's one of your CEOs guys. She's amazing. Um, so, and then, uh, what was I saying? Oh, and then there's just been tons of other things, you know, her at works paycheck has gone up, like all these things, like since she has been doing this money has just been finding her, like just finding her everywhere she is. And I'm like, dang, I need to be doing that every single day, but it's true. It's just energy. It flows to you, but you have to be open to receiving it. And when you listen to this po podcast, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And it, she goes way in depth with it. Um, and it just makes so much sense, but it's, it's literally amazing. Okay. Let me read this right quick. Where am I at? Okay. Anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. The word nothing leaves no wiggle room. It's not okay or even reasonable for a follower of Christ to worry about anything. Do you guys, do you guys find it weird too? Oh my gosh. Thank you, Kaylee Joe. Um, Pam Souter, number 67, how to manifest your business and life you want. You guys listen to that today. Like literally when you get off this, go turn it on. It's that good. Um, okay. But I, what I was asking you is like, when I read these, do you guys like smirk and smile to yourself? Or is it just me that I'm like, how do every single one of these align with what I've been blabbing about all day? Like, it's just like, God's like, here, let me just rewrite that devotion for her while she's talking so that it's exactly what she's talking about. Okay. Through circumstances may, or those circumstances may overwhelm us, frighten us or frighten us. The only reasonable response for a Christian is to take those concerns directly to God in prayer and leave them with him. This verse takes prayer a step further. Supplication is humble prayer um, or petition. It's getting on our knees before God and pleading our case. Some might see a direct correlation between the level of humility and pleading in our prayers and the level of peace we walk away with. The more we empty our hearts and anxieties to God, 
the more he replaces it with good things. Dear Father, thank you for this reminder to take everything to you in humble prayer and leave it with you. Amen. I saw um, Morgan Martin had a, a post the other day. I don't know if you guys saw it about being, um, being anxious. And she asked somebody about it. Like, I know you've struggled with this. What, you know, what did you do? How did this, how did this help you? Um, or uh, like, how did you, how did you get help for this type of thing? And in her post, she explained that the person said, I prayed about it. I prayed about it. And Morgan was like, oh, oh, like, how did I not even think about that? Like she prayed about it. And you guys, here's the craziest part about pain or anxiety or, um, uh, what was I, what book was I telling you guys about that E squared book was talking about, um, her, they, they were hiking, her and her friend were hiking and she went up this mountain and she, um, it was like literally remote, like completely remote. Like there was no service, nothing. There was nobody that could help them at this point. And they went up the mountain and she fell and she hurt her ankle. Like she thought she broke it. Like it was literally swollen like this in a matter of minutes. It was just so swollen. And, uh, the lady that wrote E squared, like put her hands around it, started praying. And, and the girl that, that had the ankle just started screaming and praying and yelling it that God was going to fix her ankle. And that it was like, literally like, I can't even think of the right words to say right now or what she was saying, but it was like just prayer. She was just asking God, like, you're going to fix this ankle and I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk. And, um, by the time they had got down the mountain, her ankle didn't even hurt anymore. Like if you think of prayer with your anxiety, or if you think of prayer with your money issues, or if you think of prayer with, um, feeling lost or sad or lonely or any of that. And you think for just one second, if you just pray about it and truly give it up truly like that girl, when she was talking about her ankle, it wasn't like, she was like, okay, God, can you fix my ankle? And then like, my ankle's never going to be fixed. Like that is not how the prayer went. The prayer was like, Jesus fix my ankle so that I can walk down this mountain because we cannot get an ambulance up here. Like you have got it. And she gave it up and truly trusted and knew that he was going to fix her ankle. Okay. That he is going to fix your finance, financial problems. That is, he is going to fix your marital problems, that he is going to fix your depression problems, that he is going to fix your anxiety problems, whatever it is. If you truly pray and truly give it up and really let it go, you will be cured of it a hundred percent, but you have to actually let it go. You have to actually give it up and know that it's out of your hands. Okay. Um, one thing that I, and, and then I'll let you guys go. I know that I've kept you for a second, but one thing yesterday, um, that I was telling Emily, I got to meet with one of my girls on the team. Her name's Emily. And, um, she was asking me, she's like, Rochelle, I need diamond. I need diamond like yesterday. And I am so determined and I know that I can do this and I am good at this business. You guys, she is, she's incredible. Like she's incredible. And she was just like, I know that I can do this. Like, what am I missing? And I, and she's a woman of faith. Her dad's a pastor. Um, she grew up in the church. She told me the story of how she met her husband, which I fell in love with. She's only 20 years old and her and her husband are just, they're, they're younger, but they they just, fate brought them together. And it was such an amazing story. I loved getting to know her. Um, but what I said was, what you're missing is giving your business to God. What you're missing here is praying over your chart name by name. What you're missing here is that you need to completely give it up to him. And I don't know if I'm talking to anybody right now about this, but hear me out. When I lay my hands on my chart and I pray over every single one of you girls, literally. And, and if you're not on my chart, listen, listen to me. I write your names on the side of it. Okay. I'm not kidding. And I pray over the people who are supposed to be in those, in those spots, if they're not already in those spots. And I pray over putting my finger literally over your name and praying over it. When I do that, I, pr when I tell you that I pray for your business, I am telling you, I pray for your business. It's probably something that takes me almost an hour every single morning. I usually do it before this or after this. It depends on if Holly loves me, but my point is that when I am able to do that, I truly feel that God has his hands on everything that I do. I told her a story last night of when we were pushing for a presidential. I remember I put my, I put my finger over um, a girl's name who was not working. Okay. She, she never did a thing, never worked at all. 
and she needed like 60 BV to be over 400, okay, to be a qualified lay. She needed like 60 BV. There was no way that she was going to do that, right, because she wasn't working. Um, and I had already asked her. I had already seen if she wanted to work, like all those things. Like there was no way she was working. And I asked God if he could somehow fill that box. I remember saying like, I, like if you could just, if, if this box could just get filled today, I can work over here. I, I, I talk to him. I ask him these things. Okay. Literally that night when I went through my downline orders to update my chart, that box was overfilled, overfilled. Okay. Over 400. And the reason why was because one time I placed a loyal customer under her who had already ordered that month and placed a very big order again, because she loved our products. Okay. God listens to you if you truly give everything to him. If you are struggling with something, give it to him. And I mean, like, get down on your knees, ball your eyes out, ha ha like physically push it up. Okay. I heard, I think Susan Wade said that to me once. She, I don't know if it was Susan Wade. I hope it was. Cause I, I'm pretty sure it was. I don't know. Anyways, um, like physically push it, give it and let it go. And when you do that, you will feel not only unburdened, but you will feel like everything will be okay. Um, I'm going to read these chats real quick because I don't want to exit out and not be able to read them. So let me stop the recording.